Hey guys, here's how I painted up my dark snake eye so far. Yep, the classic snake eye is a space white finish, as that's how the original was done by Koyokama Sensei. I've always wanted to do a dark stealth version, and in this video, I'll share how I painted it up. Join me. The Snake Eye strikes me as one of the most advanced and streamlined of the mercenary armed forces space combat suits. So I've worked to push that theme along and perhaps share some ideas that you can also use to make your version your own. I do also have a Prowler project coming along soon and will show you an interesting contrast with this one. That'll be fun. Just before we start, I'd like to give you a heads up on the Paint on Plastic MAK Comp 2022, just under a month to go with the submission deadline being March the 31st. We've also added one more judge alongside Koyokuyama Sensei himself, the property creator, Max Watanabe Sensei, the legendary modeler and Japan Sensei, and myself, I'm just plain yogurt, Lincoln Wright. Brian Machine and Kruger has kindly joined us. Thanks, Brian. Brian brings rich experience with this genre and no doubt you have seen his excellent works on machininkruger.com and maybe even are from the English language uh, forum hosted there and yes I am too. Link to more details on my website in the description. Now please join us and yes I am super excited with all of the amazing works coming in. Now the build section. There is so much nostalgia but also perspective. This kit came out in 2009 and I was still quite new to both the genre and scale modeling in general. I was extremely fortunate to meet up with the community making these kits in Tokyo and even attend the celebration party for the release of the, uh, the Wave Snake Eye and see up close a large number of builds and finishes including both the originals by Koyokama Sensei himself uh, as well as his latest iteration that was made for the box art, this one. He also presented me with this signed copy, along with the two I purchased and completed. Even looking back, these aren't bad at all, so you know, well done, past link. These were quite challenging builds for me uh, back then, as they have some seam lines to repair that have panel lines going through them. Well, I am saving this one from its box and felt it an important kit from my history with the genre to include in a new book that I will explain more of soon. This time the build was pure joy and fell together easily. Uh, it's funny how we feel things to be easier just because we've developed a little bit of skill over time. I remembered how much I loved these wave kits too, and all too soon it was complete. Uh, I did add some tiny modifications in how the hoses attached to the back of the feet, but otherwise kept it very clean and simple. This is my theme for this model to show off a very advanced and cleanly made stealth version of the snake eye. No additional parts welded on. I imagine it comes from the factory in this configuration. I did have some trouble when taking this photo set of the build. I thought I had recovered but was still suffering from a low grade fever from a certain virus you may have heard mentioned in the past couple of years. So I didn't notice I still, I put the boots on the wrong feet. So, you know, apologies in advance. If you notice some other slips in this video, do forgive me, I'm still recovering. Gray primer. Even though I mentioned how much easier the kit went together compared to 13 years ago, I still wanted to make sure I had cleaned it up properly. I mean, I'm not even putting the feet on correctly. What else have I missed? I was seriously a little worried at this point. A nice and simple way to do this, as you know, is with a primer. And I was feeling like using a nice neutral gray primer. So Guy Knight's Evo Gray, just like on my Luna Diver, but this time via airbrush. Yes, of course, we can substitute Mr. Surfacer, say 1000 for this one as well. And yes, I know that one is more widely available. I have it in my collection too. I did spot a couple of places I'd missed cleanup and quickly fixed them with uh, Tamiya Basic Putty and moved on to the base color. Yes, my idea is dark snake eye, but please stay with me. I hope it can make sense. I plan to try out a new color for the dark stealth scheme and knew the white would wash out quickly against it. So I added a little more yellow for fun. This is also the first time to show you the proper Canon recipe, actual Mr. Color 04 yellow, instead of the RLM version I've been using for a while. The difference? Well, none that I can actually see. It's mixed into Mr. Color 69 off-white and the ratio is meant to be 95% off-white to 5% yellow. I honestly think it's more like 2 or 3% yellow because it's actually quite a powerful color to be mixing into white, but who am I to argue with the instruction sheet? Now, just for laughs, how's this? Despite needing the paints in the ratio of 95 to 5, I of course accidentally added two 
Mr. Color Zero Force, the yellow, to my recent order. The color I need least of, not the off-white that I will use all the time. Ah, modeling, you got me again. Anywho, my retail fails aside, it's a beautiful paint no matter how much I don't need more yellow. I've added it to this little jar I keep and I just adjust it each time, adding a little more yellow or like for next time, for example, I'll probably just be adding more off-white. It's such a lovely color to work back and forth with and with an airbrush mix of around 60% self-leveling thinner, it airbrushes on silky smooth. You can see I'm airbrushing you know, on slightly wet. It's a full gloss paint and will dry smooth as. And I really enjoy that with space equipment. It, it just feels correct to me, if you know what I mean, but you can experiment with your own looks and textures too. Machine in his freedom. So I'm excited to see what you do with yours. Now for the main color, uh, space black. Let's go with that. It looks like we might be able to update our top MAK Canon color list with this beautiful paint, Mr. Color 125 Cowling Color. May we be cheeky and call it Cowling Color? <laughs> I've noticed and remarked to Koyo Kyoma Sensei that I really liked his blue tone camo colors and patterns on recent re-releases from Hasegawa, in particular on the 8-Ball Camel and on the third version of the Lunar Diver. This is it. It's Mr. Color 125 Cowling Color, and in true artist fashion, I suspected he's worked it into his repertoire as a main color, and then intermixed it with the other classics to make these new looks. So here's where I'm gonna test it out for us, and yep, uh, no disappointments, it's magnifico, and a must have for our paint collections. I'm so glad I got it. It's very dark, neat from the bottle, uh, in fact, very close to the custom dark navy I used for my uh, MG Jester kit recently, but simpler and somehow nicer. Uh, I'm immediately impressed with the vibrancy of the color despite it being very dark and immediately want to redo my Jester now. Why couldn't I have learned this three models ago, right? You know, oh well, that's, you know, that's the modeling journey, isn't it? I'd like to use this straight on a future project, but instead this time, I want to test it by adding my space white mix to see how it, how it brightens and to bring the colors together and also for adding in some, uh, some highlights. Of course, it's a win and produces a beautiful color. It's even nicer than I hoped for and I feel that uh, Sensei is still sharing wonderful things with us. And I hope you enjoy my passing this little hint along too. It's not a color I would have even noticed before. Just got to admit that. It's something I would ignore on the paint rack and just walk past, but uh, already it's a, it's a top favorite. I can't wait to use this again. Mixing it with a soft brush and letting it run down the sides of the dish to, uh, to eyeball the transparency uh, helps me to make sure it's airbrush ready. Never drink skim mill that looks like this, but it would probably airbrush just fine. Uh, Mr. Color looks about this when it's between say 50 and 70% paint to thinner mix. Get close to that and it will work beautifully. It's a very forgiving paint. Now airbrushing it over the space white and I'm not disappointed. It's absolutely beautiful and even better than I had hoped. This is a good time I think to mention this strategy and that by starting with a neutral color, the gray, I was able to keep the space white quite bright which allows the development of a bright dark color, which sounds extremely odd, doesn't it? Uh, likewise, with my previous models of the Desert Pink Nise and the Red and White Lunar Diver, they are both dark bright models uh, painted over a black base. Even though we paint over our early colors, uh, they can be used to establish the overall tone and feel of our model, be it bright or dark. So that makes this a bright dark snake eye. Yeah, yeah, well done, Link. That made complete sense, I guess. You'll also notice that this time I have forgotten any kind of chipping solution shenanigans, which probably would make a good product name for someone. No, no, I, I love such shenanigans and also considered using a hairspray or silicon-based chipping solution, but instead I kept it more simple and unique to give you an example of another way to go about this. And just because I like the variety. I want to test out how opaquely this color sprays whilst very thin and then do some physical abrasions as is, just to give us a baseline for this new color. Well, new to me. We can always add additional steps on future projects, right? 
Masking solution. So do forgive me. One complication. I use some masking solution just to make it easier to make one of the space boots, uh, the top part, space white. Well, leave it space white is more accurate. For this finish, uh, I'd like to combine the concepts of ID bands and previous base colors and simply leave three points of white around the model. A wrist element, one shoulder and one toe cap. There are no MAK based rules as such about this at all. Uh, it's more of a visual art design choice here and we could go larger with these sections or smaller. It's really just our choice. In this way, these machining kits are great with their artistic freedom. You know, they've taught me a great deal, both with uh, when recreating the classics. I mean, there are very good reasons that they are classics and when creating my own originals. Wrist and shoulder were simply not painted over. Then I used an ammo by MIG brush to apply an AK Interactive masking solution and giggled because they worked together just fine. Lastly, I mixed the remaining space black color in my airbrush cup uh, with a little more space white to produce a final color uh, and then added that uh, with the airbrush and a couple of very subtle points of highlight. Uh, nothing too strong, nothing too harsh, uh, just very softly. Uh, although whilst doing this, I'm thinking I'd love to be brave enough to do a forced lighting uh, effect model one day, but I've already got some friends who are really good at that. Sean, hit a uh, shout out, uh, who are really good at that. So I'll collaborate with them to bring you that kind of thing much better than I could do. So these are just mist coats to gently abrade in the future for a deeper paintwork effect uh, with no additional uh, product shenanigans required. So that'll be really good. I'll be showing you that in the next video. So please make sure you have liked the video and subscribed so that the almighty algorithm won't hide the link goodness from you. Next up, the hand brushing hijinks. I mean, come on, Uncle Link, you know we didn't come here to see you airbrush. Make with the hand brushing goodness already. <laughs> all right, all right. Tough crowd on the YouTubes tonight. Here's something I learned uh, really early on whilst experimenting with lacquer hand brushing. Um, and no, the stink was the first one. I, yeah, sure, I, I agree. But it was uh, on a similar off-white plastic kit and um, I'm happy to share it. So long as I can still get it right, it's been like 14, 15 years, so no pressure. Uh, remember I babbled something about bright dark earlier? Well, uh, I left these parts bare plastic to show you how I kind of stumbled across this classic MAK paint move on my fireball stopgap way back in 2008. Uh, I think it was my first real swing uh, at this style of painting and it turned out okay. The first step was to loosely base the off-white plastic with uh, Mr. Color Propeller Color. It's a beautiful deep dark red. I added to the dish that I commonly add Mr. Color Flat Black to and I just go back and forth depending on the look I'm after. Uh, it mixes to a fantastic very dark black red and is perfect for the base color here. Applying it with more thinner than usual allows it to go on something between a wash and a base coat and that's loosely sketched on. I set these parts aside to dry and then come back with the dish I use for both Mr. Color 37 and 116. That's RLM Grey Violet and RLM 66 Black Grey. Yeah. These are both uh, classics for this genre must-haves. So again, I just kind of add more of one of them and then skew that mix towards my needs at that time. Uh, it's both never exactly correct, but also not ex exactly wrong either. You know, they're both beautiful colors and I enjoy how this variation turns out. This is again, loosely sketched over the propeller black mix. Uh, yes, it will intermingle with the previous application. Sometimes it'll bring up a nuance of the light edge of the plastic or the dark undercoat. Watch closely and you can produce an extremely nuanced and interesting finish simply by how much you load your brush, how long you allow it to linger on the surface, to how much you, you retouch the wet surface. With practice, you'll learn how these paints behave and be able to uh, anticipate and control the outcomes. It's really fantastic. Whilst having these paints ready to go, they are also the Canon colors to use on background details. Uh, and that's something I like to do is keep some Canon stuff whilst I'm experimenting with, with new things to keep it close uh, and related to the genre. 
So I zoomed around painting up the not so visible but yet important details. The inside of the armor plates, uh, the closure mechanism up under the arms, and some of these internal details that may not be visible, but you might get tiny peaks of them through gaps in the armor. Uh, and doing it this way, after you've got the other stuff done, makes it you know, fast and simple, it's good. Now yes, we can of course also use water-based acrylics. It might sound funny, but uh, you know, secret share, I extensively used such paints, uh, Citadel and Vallejo, as a Warhammer painter for many years before coming to scale modeling. And I enjoy using them just as much. It's just, it's another paint I'm very familiar with. I've only shown you the previous step in lacquers in case you were curious about the studio look, but I also use Citadel and Vallejo game and model color on studio models. But, you know, the Japanese company tie-ups require us to give the recipes in Mr. Color, so that's the reason only those paints were ever shown. Truthfully, my humble point of view is that paint is paint, and it's only limited by our skill and experience. So please, use what you prefer, all good. To this point, I knew this final step would look best in VMC Vallejo Model Color 950, flat black. I love how flat and solid this particular paint looks. Uh, it ends up, it looks like some kind of vulcanized rubber coating. Uh, this was chosen to apply to a couple of panels to both break up the overall color of my, my new space black, uh, but also to vary the sheen. Replaced covers somehow give a, a great deal of life to a little plastic kit like this. So yes, you'll, you'll often see them in my work. I just really like it. Is it good? Well, I can't even put the feet back on right. So. I'm more happy to have completed the painting without disaster, and I'm excited to get onto details and weathering next. We'll share that soon. I'd like to thank my supporters on Patreon for paying me to film myself make Plastic Spaceman with a low gray fever. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to bonus videos, then visit patreon.com slash paintonplastic.